I go, the wind follows. And the wind, it smells like rain. All right, let's do this one last time. Hey everyone, I'm the Canadian Lad, and today I watched the official trailer for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse at point two fabric speed. Now let's, when I covered Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse movie, that video received more than 23 million views. It's because movies like this are just something special when you watch them in slow motion. You get to see a more detailed background, you know that everything that you're seeing was intentionally put out there, overall it just makes the whole experience much better. I feel like my niche was made for a film like this. And this video is a proof of that. Anyway, so without any further ado, let me show you some incredible hidden details I found in Across the Spider-Verse trailer. But a heads up, my favorite details are number 13, 15, and 16. Those will blow your mind. Alright, so number one. Let's begin by listing all the variants of Spider-Man that are gonna appear in this film. It's important for you to know who appears in this film because that way I can better explain the details. First, of course, the protagonists of the film, Miles Morales and Gwen Stacy. Then we have Spider-Man 2099 aka Miguel O'Hara, voiced by none other than Oscar Isaac. Last time we saw him was in the post credit scene of Into the Spider-Verse. Then we have Jessica Drew, aka Spider-Woman. Then comes our favorite Peter B. Parker from the first film. Then we see someone who's probably Mayday Parker, who's probably one of the most popular characters if you are a comic book reader. She comes from a universe where Peter Parker is her father and retires after he gets injured in a fight with the Green Goblin. So she takes over as Mayday Parker. Up next, we have Hubbard Brown, aka Spider-Punk. Now it is confirmed that he will be voiced by Daniel Kaluuya. Now Spider-Punk in the comics carries his guitar wherever he goes, and he basically leads a rebellion against President Osborn's regime in his universe. Then we have Ben Wiley aka Scarlet Spider. Although we don't see him in this trailer, but he was spotted in a Spider-Verse themed merchandise, so it's pretty safe to assume he will be in the film. Now Scarlet Spider is basically a clone of Peter Parker, created to cause problems in Peter's life. But years later he becomes more than just a clone and creates his own identity as Scarlet Spider. Another Spider-Man we don't see in the trailer but will play a big part in the film is Spider-Man India, aka Pavetar Pravakar. His universe was shown in the first official teaser, but now it's been confirmed that yes, he will be in the film. Then we have one of the biggest surprises, Marvel's PS4 Spider-Man donning that red, blue, and white suit. This suit already appeared in the first film, and I'm so excited that the filmmakers took the next step and added the video game iteration of himself as a cameo. Although I'm not quite sure who he's talking to in this scene, well, it's definitely not our Miles Morales. Then we have Mary Jane and her daughter Annie Parker. Alright, I'm gonna speed up a little bit now because I wanna talk about the details I found as well. We see Spider-Man Unlimited who is among many spiders trying to capture Morales in his escape. Then we have Mangaverse Spider-Man, his universe is inspired by Japanese manga. Mabel Riley aka Lady Spider, Flash Thompson aka Captain Spider, although I don't think I would have recognized him if it weren't for the exposed chin and hair. So yes, there is a universe where Flash Thompson gets bitten by a spider instead of Peter. Then we have this particular Spider-Man who has a bag on his head. This is actually from the comics where Spider-Man joined the Fantastic Four and Reed Richards helped Spider-Man after he lost his suit. Although in the comics he looked like this, wearing a spare Fantastic Four outfit with no shoes and a loose brown paper bag as a mask. However, in the trailer he's wearing a full Spider-Man costume, only missing his shoes and mask. I think this is because of copyright issues as Sony does not have the rights to Fantastic Four. And then we see PlayStation 1 Spider-Man with a creepy running animation and a slightly lower frame rate seemed to purposefully mimic the classic video game counterpart. Then we see Spider-Armor MK1, which is basically a bulletproof Spider-Man costume. And then Spider-Armor MK2, with a slight touch of yellow in the suit. Well, in the comics, Spider-Man does lose his spidey sense for some time, which stopped him from dodging hits that included bullets. Therefore, he had to create a bulletproof suit. And we even see Spider-Armor MK3, which is an even stronger variation of the previous suit. Up next, we see Japanese Spider-Man, Spider-Monkey from the Ape Universe, and last but not least, we see Spider-Cop and Werewolf Spider-Man. All right. Number two, when we see Miles Morales swinging through the street and stealing someone's hot dog, well, not really stealing because he eventually paid $25 for it, but notice just before Miles took it, because of the lower frame rate they have set for Miles, his right hand appears twice in the same frame. And if you look closely, his hand motion is different in both versions. Here his thumb is a little higher and his pinky a little lower. And it's important to remember that the animator set 12 frames per second for Miles, while the world around him runs at 60 
60 FPS. This is an important detail because as Miles improves and reaches his full potential by the climax, he's inching towards that 60 frames per second. Number 3. In this scene, we see Miles wearing a Brooklyn jersey with the number 42 on it. The number 42 appears in key scenes throughout Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and it's also present in the original comic book. Now, if you have watched my Into the Spider-Verse breakdown, well, references to the number 42 are in honor of Jackie Robinson, the first African-American Major League Baseball player whose jersey number was 42. Now, it's also important to mention that the first official teaser didn't have Miles wearing this Brooklyn jersey. He was just wearing a simple white t-shirt. But now in the second official trailer, the animators have changed it. Not only that, as soon as a multiversal portal opens up in his room, notice his jersey keeps changing its color, implying how Miles Morales has different color jerseys in different universes. This also explains the delayed release of the film. The animators are taking their time to animate some of the best hidden details in the film. I know a few people working on this movie and I guarantee you this film is gonna be bonkers. Number 4. Gwen Stacy is now wearing a pink jacket in this trailer whereas in the first look she didn't have any. And it seems like they have also replaced Gwen's dialogue here in the second trailer. You got a minute? Wanna get out of here? In the first look, Gwen does ask if Miles wants to get out of here but that happens when she's sitting by the window. Wanna get out of here? So yes, they have made some very subtle changes throughout the trailer. Number 5. In this scene, we see a lot of Spider-Man cameos. Notice just behind Lady Spider who is carrying a laptop, there seems to be a Thanos-inspired Spider-Man. I know this is probably a different Spider-Man, but if you show me anything big and purple now, I just think of Thanos. And this one looks like a Spider-Man in his undies. Now the undies is a suit players can unlock in Marvel's Spider-Man game. Number 6. Peter B. Parker now has a carrier, so that means he's probably a father now in his universe. The last time we saw him, he was trying to amend things with his MJ, and it seems like things worked out just fine. Number 7. In this shot, which so far has been the money shot of the trailer, both Miles and Gwen seem to be sitting upside down. So they probably have webs coming out of their asses in this scene. I'm so sorry for ruining this scene. Anyway, number 8. When we see Jessica Drew coming out of a portal, notice her motorcycle has 5 different shadows coming out of the portal. Now this scene immediately establishes just how strong she is, because Miles Morales was struggling in the beginning to travel through this portal. And over here, Jessica Drew has literally come out on her motorcycle, meaning she's a far more mature Spider-Man or, or, or Spider-Woman in her universe. Number 9. As I said, Jessica Drew is far more powerful than Miles in this film, notice she even has has webs coming out of her five fingers all at the same time. And even before the webs come out, notice we could see a white spot on each of her fingers, indicating she might have organic web just like she does in the comics. Number 10. We see Spider-Man 2099 aka Miguel O'Hara watching a footage of himself with his daughter. Now the file's name is Gabriella, probably after his daughter. And the fact that he's watching a footage might indicate that his daughter is now dead. But notice if you look at the technology Miguel has, it's all holographic and yellow in color, or perhaps golden. Now, in the previous shot where we see Miles and Gwen looking at Miguel, the same holographic screens can be seen here too. Meaning, Miguel is probably watching the footage of his daughter here. And if you notice the device Miguel has developed to stabilize himself in the multiverse, even that has a golden yellow touch. So there is a pattern here. Number 11. In this scene, Miguel seems to be showing Peter B. Parker, Miles, and Gwen the ins and outs of the multiverse. Notice the way Miles, Gwen, and Peter B. Parker are looking around, but Miguel just stands still as the multiverse materializes around them. So Miguel O'Hara will possess extreme knowledge about the multiverse, and he might end up teaching everyone about it. Which brings me to my next detail number 12. Remember the device I just talked about that Miguel had created to safely travel to another universe? Notice Gwen Stacy was wearing a similar device when she first came to visit Miles. Because if you remember, all the other Spider-Man were glitching in Miles' universe in the first film. So this device could be a solution to stabilize them in an alternate universe. And if we go back to this scene, notice almost every variant of Spider-Man is wearing this device on their hand, which tells me this could be a nexus point where Miguel calls upon all Spider-Man variants from every universe, like a society where everyone is Spider-Man. Number 13. Now in this shot, there's a very interesting hidden detail here. I'll give you 3 seconds to tell me what do you see that is not normal. 1, 2, Three. All right, so if you notice, Gwen's body here is kind of fading away, whereas Miles' body looks properly solid as it should be. I mean, Miles has a proper outline, but Gwen doesn't. This could be because the animators said that they made Gwen's universe based on watercolors, and that may as well be the reason why Gwen's body seems to be a little faded, but Miles's isn't. And if you think about it, this reveals a huge plot detail about the film. And to explain that, I'll have to take you back to the first film. Notice Gwen's body appeared all normal when she was in Miles's universe. No water 
water effect or fading. But in her own universe, her body has a watery effect to it. So it's like a general rule. No matter what the physics are in your universe, your body will adapt to the physics of the universe you're currently in. Make sense? Alright. But in this scene in Across the Spider-Verse, we see the laws of physics are different for both Miles and Gwen, despite them being in the same place at the same time. It's even clearer in this shot where you can clearly see Gwen having the watery effect animated into her body. But Peter B. Parker, Miles, and Miguel don't have that. So the point I'm trying to make is, in Miguel O'Hara's universe, no matter where you come from, you retain the gravity you're used to in your universe. And that's why the gravity in Miguel's universe is all over the place. Because it doesn't have a specific gravity law in this universe. It's whatever you choose to have. Kind of funny, eh? How I managed to figure the gravity in that scene by just staring at Gwen in this scene. Number 14. When we see multiple spider people all jumping towards Miles in order to stop him, notice the first variant that grabs a hold of him has six arms. This is actually a reference to mutated Spider-Man from the comics, where he had six arms. Miles then tries to escape, but Spider Armor MK1 now joins mutated Spider-Man. So Miles is now having to fight two of them. But not for long as another Spider-Man joins in, and Miles has three Spider-Man attacking him at the same time. And a few frames later, another Spider-Man joins in in a formal suit. But if you notice, the trailer never shows us how Miles escape here from so many different Spider-Mans. It just cuts to an earlier scene. Meaning, when they all start grabbing him and holding him, that might happen towards the end of the fight. Number 15. Now this detail that I found could reveal yet another plot point of the film. Notice when all the Spider-Man variants were trying to capture Miles, every one second for exactly 10 frames, we can see this yellow glow on the screen that literally outshines everybody. And as I told you, yellow is the color of Miguel's tech. So something glowing every other second for 10 frames might indicate that Miguel is in the process of creating something new, and Miles wants to stop it. Therefore, all Spider-Man variants are after him. So I don't think Miles is trying to escape here as some of the people are saying. I think he's trying to stop something here. And this similar yellow glow can be seen reflecting on Gwen's face as well. Number 16. We then see Miguel O'Hara galloping towards Miles Morales. He uses his razor-sharp claws to generate even more speed. And then he lunges towards Miles. But notice even before Miguel touched him, Miles' suit is already ripped apart. This is the first time we're able to see his skin through his suit. That's the level of damage he will take in this film. And if I move forward a couple of frames, notice we can see the claw marks on Miles' chest, indicating it was in fact Miguel who probably used his claws to tear Miles' suit apart. Spider-Man 2099 is just a badass of a villain, eh? Good thing he isn't even the main villain. The main villain is Spot. And if you want to know his origin story, I'd ask you to watch my friend Paul's breakdown of the trailer. Now let's, I'm gonna end the video here even though I did find a few more details, but those are not hard to catch. And I won't waste your time showing you details you probably noticed already. I'm focusing on increasing the quality on my channel as before. Uh, I, I know there has been a slight drop in quality in my videos, but I hope this one didn't feel like a waste of time. I genuinely care and want to put out quality content so you enjoy and share it with friends and family. And I hope I'm your family. And if you think so, then please give me a thumbs up, grab the subscribe button, and turn notifications on. And even if you don't, I know you still like me. Alright, I'll see you lads in the next one, where I watch everything everywhere all at once at 25x speed. See you lads.